how GitHub issue sync works uh, and why it might be interesting to you. So the basic idea is that once you have it installed, you can pull the issues from GitHub to uh, a local machine. And the idea here is really that you can use an agent to refine them. That's my motivation at least. So once you've initialized it, you can pull it and it basically pulls all the issues locally. Um, and then from that moment onwards, whenever you run pull, it pulls in all the changes. And if you run push, it pushes all the changes up. Additionally, you can write a skill. Um, in this case, I want to pick the agent pi, which is I'm using um, for the project scope. You can see that it writes the skill here. And so now when I use pi, um, it, it, it can basically read the skill file um, and understand how the GitHub issue sync works. And so that the idea is here that the, the agent can use this, but I can also use this myself. So I can, for instance, view an issue. And this issue is really just in issues, open 200. And this uh, slug here is just uh, informational so that I can find it easily. And it's just marked down with a bunch of um, information on the top. I can, um, I can close issues, in which case, um, if I then do um, status, you can see they went from open to closed. Um, and what happens behind the scenes is that it moves from, um, from open to closed to different folder. So if I were to push this up now, um, it would go back to GitHub, um, but I will just reopen this now. And then I do a git status, um, nothing happens, right? That's, uh, that's the basics, but now I want to show you uh, why this might be interesting. So we want to refine ticket 200. Let's think through what we need to do here to implement this feature. Is everything clear? Are there open questions? Right, and Basically what it will do is it will read this, um, the skill, then it will read the issue. Uh, actually it will completely incorrectly. <laughs> uh, it will just pull the latest version here and then read it, but um, uh, it would, didn't have to pull the latest version here. Um, now it will of course read the source code and try to figure out like if there's something to do here. One important thing about this um, issue syncing system is it's kind of intended for situations where you're editing your own issues. So the issue 200 here is actually from a third person. So if I were to edit it, it would actually be editing someone else's comment, um, which is not really what you want to do in most of those cases. Um, so it's it. I mostly use this as a as a good mechanism for me to refine the issues that I open myself on a whim. Uh, in, in in the project I'm working on. And then once it has worked for this, uh, hopefully it will give us some idea of what it wants to do. So I, I will actually not let it do this, like just do a brush job, no more investigation, just directly update the ticket, please don't. So let's see what it will do. So now it will just edit the ticket. Um, let's wait quickly until it's done. And one, one other thing is like, you can edit not just the tickets, but also the um, sort of GitHub projects related stuff if you authorize the token correctly. So you can also associate it with projects, change issue types, uh, labels and so forth. So now we, we can just see what it did. Um, if we do it as a diff now, we can see, well, this is a pretty big diff because it just added a whole bunch of stuff at the end of this ticket. Um, but you get the idea. That's really the motivation of why you might want to do this. Um, the last thing I want to point out is that this works also with really large projects. So um, this here is um, a pretty old checkout of the Rust project, but I can still do 
um, in it here and pull. Uh, it will take about two and a half minutes, but it will actually manage to pull in all the issues from GitHub. Um, and every time you run pull again, it recognizes what the last change time stamp on an issue was. So we'll actually use the GraphQL API to minimize the total number of pulls that we'll have to do.